what's going on Leslie here from Lyrical Diaries and by the time you guys are watching this video you've already seen my blu-ray collection you've already seen my tv show collection and now you guys are about to get a choice a choice now you guys are about to get a taste of my dvd collection I have more dvds than I have blu-rays I've already told you guys that before because I was collecting blue dvds before I even thought about buying a blu-ray because I thought that blu-rays were freaking expensive as hell in which it really is um once you think about it it is thirty dollars for a movie mmm I'd rather choose a DVD any day. Even though that quality is not there with the um, Blu-ray, but still, man. $30 for a Blu-ray? No. That's about as, almost as much as a damn video game. But anyways, you didn't come here to hear me about talk about the price of Blu-ray and DVD and video games. You came to see my DVD collection, so uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy this. I can't tell you how many I do have. Um, I'll probably put it at the end, how many DVDs I have. I don't really know but anyways let's go ahead and get started I have about six stacks of DVD so let's go ahead and get into this now keep in mind if you see any movie that I talk about in this video right here uh, let me know in the comment section below if you would like for me to do a review maybe you haven't seen it maybe you want to check it out maybe it looks interesting whatever whatever and I'll be glad to go ahead and do a review for it so let's go ahead and get started with the first stack closest to my left we have Transformers the original ha huh, the original The Revenge of the Fallen starring Shia LaBeouf uh probably one of my favorite Transformer movies I think it's the last one that uh Megan Fox was in and it has an awesome little slip cover for it for a DVD pretty cool slip cover I think I got this a while back for like five dollars not bad at all all right I'm gonna try to keep this thing brief and we got Pain and Gain starring Mark Barberg and uh Dwayne Johnson uh, it's a pretty good movie. It's basically about these three guys that, um, what do they do? I forgot. I can't, I can't remember what they did. I just know that they were like some type of bodybuilders and, uh, Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson in this movie was actually pretty funny. You thought that because he's built and he has muscles like this right here on the back. That he has muscles and stuff like that. He's going to be the strongest dude. But really in actuality, he really wasn't the strongest guy. Sorry if I spoiled it for you guys, but yeah. I'll probably do more in-depth video uh, review on this movie. Alright, then we have The Truth About Charlie, starring Mark Wahlberg. I love Mark Wahlberg. He's probably one of my favorite actors. And then we have four film collection, Batman's collection. We have Batman... Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, Batman Returns, and probably the one, my favorite ones out of here is the one with Mr. Freeze. I love Mr. Freeze. Basically, I love villains. So I love him. I love the Riddler, Poison Ivy, uh, Catwoman, and the Penguin. The Penguin, dude. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I used to walk around like this. Because he has three fingers, and I used to do like this and try to... That's so messed up, but it was so funny. And then one time I, like, took my fingers, and, like, I put tape around it so I can be able to try to eat because I couldn't, like... Cause I was like, how the hell can he survive? Star Trek. Alright. But anyways, let's go ahead and move right along. Alright, so let's go. Alright, and then we have uh, Jonah Hex. Starring Megan Fox and Josh Brolin. Sorry, little lint is falling around. Then we have The Darkest Hour with Emile Hirsch. Um, I like this movie. I watched it not too long ago and it's actually pretty good. I got this like for $5 at Walmart. And then we have Bobby Z starring Paul Walker. And Lawrence Fishburne. Um, I like this movie too. I think that's Chuck Liddell right there on the back. Yeah. That's Chuck Liddell right there on the back. And then we have Next. Some of these movies I got like for Movie Gallery when they used to be in stock. Not in stock. When they used to be in business like a long time ago. So like I said, back when I used to collect uh, DVDs. So we got Next with Nicolas Cage and Je Jessica Biel. Ninja Assassins. I don't really get off on like, uh, I don't, well, I mean, I like stuff like this, but I don't really like watching when people get cut or their heads get sliced. Now I'm starting to get a little bit better with it and just think about it as it's not real, even though, you know, that could be happening in real life, but I try to think of it as it's not real. Like Saw 2, I think it was, when the girl had to stick her arm up in the glass and it got stuck. Dude, I'm not going to sit here and tell stories. I did close my eyes. Like, I closed my freaking eyes. When she stuck her hand up there and the glass tried to pull it down, I was like, oh, God, no. And then I mute it so I don't have to hear her scream. I know that's some pussy stuff, but it happens. All right, and then we have uh, Fairly Odd Parents, The Abra Catastrophe. 
Um, I can't. I think my brother got this for me like a while back. It used to have like the cover and stuff to it, but uh, it's gone. And then we have the Born Ultimatum. Tom Cruise and Mission Mission Impossible Three. All right, so that's it for the first stack. Let's move right along to the second. All right, then we have Twenty One Jump Street, uh, starring Shannon Tatum and Jonah Hill. I think I got this for like two dollars at um, Black Friday, not too long ago. Cause this movie wasn't all that great to me. I didn't. It was. It was okay. So I was like, two dollars is not that bad for a DVD. And then we got the box. Captivity. Probably one of my favorite torture films. I haven't seen this in a long time, but uh, this is a really good one. It came out in 2007. Maybe some of you guys have watched this before. Cabin in the Woods. I know, I know, I know. I got it on DVD. This, Like I said, this is back when I was collecting DVDs because they were a little bit cheaper. I, think I got this for like $15 or something like that. And the Blu-ray was like $25. So I was like, hey, 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 hey. Let's do the math here. Save ten dollars. But look how look at this thing. Isn't that so cool? Like I like that. I did a review on this like actually a few years ago when I um actually bought this movie. I might upload that if you guys want to see the review. I talk about some weird stuff in that thing. But yeah. Um I spit on your grave unranked. I have yet to see that. Probably check that out. Not because her booty cheeks are hanging out, but that's weird. Um, then we have Open Water 2, Adrift. Wow. I did not realize that McDreamy was in this movie. I guess when you watch it, you don't really realize these characters until you see them somewhere else. And you're like, damn, he's hot. I want to know who he is. And then you find him out later on, and then you're like, wow. I didn't know you were in that movie. Alright, and then we have A Perfect Getaway. Sorry for talking too much, but alright. And then we have The Roommate. Which came out in 2011. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad of a movie. It was actually pretty interesting. This guy right here is hot as hell too. So that wasn't bad to sit there and watch for like, what is it, an hour and a half maybe? Two hours, something like that? Maybe? Something like that? I don't know. And then we have A Nightmare on Elm Street, the 2010 version. Freddy Krueger does not look like Freddy Krueger in this movie. Spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty decent movie. And then we have Possession, starring Sharon Michelle Gellar. Never seen it. I'll probably be checking that out soon. Then we have Sorority Row. Get down, Daisy. Another, like, I guess a horror slasher type movie, whatever. It's weird, decent, and I guess entertaining for some. But for most, it's not. Alright, so let's go ahead and get into the third stack we got here. We have Fame. I wanna live forever. I wanna learn how to fly. Came out in 2009. Pretty decent movie. And then we have Hairspray. I know my collection is all kinds of bits and wild and stuff like that. When I was like younger, I used to buy movies and watch movies because there were certain actors in there that I loved and I thought they were freaking hot, like Zac Efron right here. I was hoping that I pointed to Zac Efron and didn't say Zac Efron and pointed here. So, yeah, Zac Efron and James Marsden. So, uh, and John Travolta at the top. But yeah, Hairspray, really good musical. And then I have Saw the Final Chapter. I haven't seen it in 3D. I heard it was pretty decent, but uh, yeah, this movie was actually pretty gruesome. I was a huge Saw fan. I used to love watching this every freaking Halloween. Uh, Saw would come out, and I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to see that. I couldn't wait till I turned 17, because I was able to go see it without it, and me and my brothers and sisters didn't have to go sneak in to go watch it. And then I have Saw 2. This is a movie that I was talking about when the girl stuck her arm up in the glass and then she pulled her arms down and ah, there it is right there. I don't know if you saw that or not, but that was the, the little part there. And then that guy had to cut his freaking eye out to get the key. And then we have uh, eight midnight horror movies here on this side. Which has El Muerto, Slaughtered, Filled to Ashes, Sheltered, Salvage, Halloween H2O, Hiding Creep. Uh, slash and burn and then on this side we have 10 horror classics um, which is the Ray Brandy threat I can't even see that so whatever um, how I can't see that part either maybe that's called howling trend search children of the corn Dracula 2 hell razor inferno curtains puppet master and Halloween h2o and uh, something else I can't see it but yeah so that's that
Uh, I might be checking these out, probably doing a review on it, because these look like old classic horror movies, and I'm pretty sure the graphics um, aren't as crisp as they are today, so I'll definitely be checking that out. Beastly, pretty awesome romantic movie. It made me cry, like, no bullshit. It made me cry. And then I had one of the Olsen twins in here. Which one is it? Mary Kate? I used to love them back in the day, dude, for real. Like, Mary Kate and Ashley right here. You can't lie and say that you never used to watch her movies and stuff. Their movies were freaking awesome. And their TV show was. My sister had all the freaking books of Mary Kate and Ashley. If I go to my mom's house and I find them, I'll show you guys. Like, no bullshit. She had them all. I collect Scooby-Doo, though. Scooby-Doo was my favorite, so I collected his books. I still got that back there somewhere. And then we have The Condemned, starring Stone Cold Steve Austin. Dude, I told you, I love Stone Cold, man. This was an awesome movie. And then we have Untraceable here on Blu-ray. Well, then that should have been in my Blu-ray collection, not a DVD, but whatever. Um, so, yeah. And then we have Fast Five. Yeah, I know, it's on DVD. You guys saw it if you guys saw my Fast Five unbox, Fast Six unboxing. And then we have the four film favorites of Final Destination 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, one of my favorite series. Like, what do you call this? A horror series? You call it something. Man, I used to think that this shit was real. Like, I used to be scared and paranoid to not, like, to have a shower curtain at the top because I might slip. And I didn't want shampoo to be in there for a while because that dude, like, he slipped in the shower. Thing wrapped around his head and... No. Would you want to... No. Forget that. I was scared. Like, I'm not going to even tell stories. I was scared. Um, Dawn of the Dead. I never was scared of zombies. I never thought that zombies would come alive. Like, it could probably happen, maybe, but I wasn't afraid of it. Uh, and then we have Katy Perry, the part of me, the movie. Yeah, I know. I love it, dude. Like, Katy Perry's my favorite. I love her. This movie's freaking awesome. It made me cry. And then my sister, I went to go see it in theaters, like, was it two years ago? I think it came out. And I saw it in 3D. That was the first time I ever saw a 3D movie. It was freaking awesome. And then I just got my sister to watch it, like, a few months ago. Because she was like, I don't want to watch that. I don't want to watch that. And then I got her to watch it. She cried and she loved the movie. So I was like, mission accomplished. Same thing with True Blood, man. She didn't like True Blood. And I got her to watch it. Because like, True Blood came out in what, 2008, 2009, something like that. So I was trying to get her to watch it back in 2009, 2010. And she was like, I don't want to watch this. This is like some stupid vampire stuff. I don't want to watch it. It's so idiot. It's so stupid. And then so I was like, dude, like, go check it out. It's pretty awesome. Like, she liked Blood Ties. I've never seen that movie or that TV show. So I got her to watch it, like, a few months ago, like, two months ago, whatever. I was like, man, watch season one. Let's go ahead and watch True Blood. It's coming out again this year, the summer, season finale, series finale. Watch it with me. So we watched it. I went to sleep after, like, the second episode because I've already seen them all. So she watched the whole entire season one in one night. Tell me, for someone who doesn't like the show, why would you watch it all night? And she said that she loved it. So now she's wanting to watch season two. So then we got The Pursuit of Happiness right here. I didn't really like this movie. A lot of people enjoyed it, but I didn't really like it. I might have to watch it again. Maybe I might have a different perspective. I'm um, watching it, what, 10 years later? When did this come out? Um, 2007. So yeah. Nope. Hasn't been 10 years yet. But uh, then we got The Pink Panther. Let me quit talking. Maybe you guys don't want to hear me talk. Then we got Seven Pounds. That was a pretty decent movie. Uh, Friends with Benefits. Awesome. I didn't know Justin Timberlake had a body like that. He's got a body of a god. Got eyes but a beacon brown. Alright, let's see. You got Glory Road. Probably one of my favorite sports movies based on a true story. I remember after watching this movie here, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be a best base basketball player ever. So I started training hard and whatever, whatever in high school so I can get that starting position. Um, I never really got it. I did get one on the JV team. It wasn't great. I wanted to be on varsity starting position after I worked so hard. My coaches had it in for me. So, uh, 2006. This movie came out in 2006. So when I was 16 years old, I was working hard during the summer trying to get ready for the previous basketball or the following basketball season and hope to start and uh like i said i didn't get to start on varsity it was jv where i started but the jv team was awesome so it was cool um and then we have bring it on no it's not stick it my bad bring it on was at the top of the screen that's why i said bring it on but stick it freaking awesome movie and then we have dodgeball probably one of my favorite uh ben stiller movies it was really really funny i can watch this and continue to laugh because it was so freaking funny Funny. All right, and then we got the apparition. That's it. okay. And then we have Teristas, uh, another torture film, which was really good. They had some hot ass people in here. They had Josh Dumel in this biatch right there, dude. 
Mm. And then we have Silent Hill. I remember when I was a kid and I used to play Silent Hill, dude. I used to be scared, especially walking through that fog, man. That was scary as hell. Like, I didn't want to die. Whenever I, I couldn't play single player game on myself. Because, like, I will get scared if I die. I jump and I'm like, man, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Like, I was afraid to die in a video game. I was weird. Um, and then we have Freddy vs. Jason. That was a pretty decent movie. You're not even scared of me. And uh, then we have Pulse. Pretty good movie, too. I think Kristen Bell is in that one. Yep, right there. And that one dude from those dog movies, like Bud, I think. I think that was the movies that he used to be in when he was a kid. Um, and then we have Red Eye, one of my favorite movies with uh, Rachel McAdams. She stabbed that dude in the throat with a freaking pen, man. And he's like, ah, ah, and he couldn't speak. It was crazy. But, uh, and then we have Bride Wars. I remember we went to go see this in theater, dude. I was so pissed. There's nothing but, okay, I'm not going to be racist. Like I said, I live in a predominantly white county. Um, so there's rarely any black people. But anyway, so I went to the movie theaters and there was nothing but white girls everywhere. Me and my sister walk in there and her little Asian friend. And we walk in there and there's nothing, like I said, white people everywhere. So like all the seats were filled. We got there late. So we had to sit at the bottom row and my neck was like, I was like this the whole time. My freaking, I couldn't, I said never again, never again. If we are late to a freaking movie, we're not going in. We're going somewhere else and watching another movie. I'm not going to sit there and have neck cramps. I'm paying $10 to watch a movie to have neck cramps. Forget that. My sister's like, oh my God, I was so comfortable. No, no, I was not comfortable. I'm not paying $10 just to have my neck broken. Forget that. But uh, it was an awesome movie. Our second to final stack all right we have a uh, video now players dude I still have my video now player it works awesome and then like a couple was it a couple months later they came out with the color my mom was like Leslie I told you not to open it they're gonna come out with a color one later on I was like mom you didn't tell me that you did not tell me that but I still have it I was a huge fan of Spongebob and Scooby-Doo so that she got me priority uh, Scooby-Doo and Spongebob and I try to find these other cartoons like this so this is fairly odd parents. I try to collect all of them. And these were only ones that they had available at the time. Now if I were to try to find this again, they probably wouldn't have it and they might cost like close to 100 bucks. And Leslie's not paying that for no bullshit I had when I was 13. <laughs> Alright, so then we have another one. We have Spongebob bubbled ripped pants. Cuzzy. Rip this pants. You know I shouldn't run in, I shouldn't hurt, but the pain feels so much worse. Dude, I was in love with SpongeBob. Every freaking episode, I don't care how many times I watched it, I love that man. I mean, I got SpongeBob behind me. I got SpongeBob sheets and shit. I don't care. I love SpongeBob. And the poster right there to my left, dude. And then we got SpongeBob, Hooky, uh, Mermaid Man, and Barnacle Boy 2. That's this episode that's in there. Maybe one day I might turn it on for you guys if you want to see the video now, player. And then we have the Scooby-Doo 3-pack. This is what the disc looked like. I used to have a a case for it, but I don't know what happened to it. That might be still in my video now, player. But this is what the disc looked like back in the day. I used to take that shit everywhere with me. When we went on traveling, I'll take it with me and watch TV. Um, and then we have <laughs> another SpongeBob. I told you I was a huge SpongeBob fan. The disc is not even in here. It must be in my little pouch. I don't even know where it's at then. I'm mad. Now I'm mad since I'm opening it. Golly. And this one's missing too. The Rugrats. Ding, ding, ding. I gotta find that, man. I gotta ask my mom if she's seen it. Dude, I don't even know what my disc looked like anymore. Or the, ca the case. Okay, this one's still here. Good. And this is another SpongeBob one. Damn, the Rugrats, man. Oh. I gotta find that. Man. I'm sorry, guys, dude. I'm gosh. I gotta find those. Damn. Now it makes me want to watch the Rugrats, and I can't find it. But all right. So let's go ahead and move into our finish this stack here. And then we have Valentine's Day. Really good movie to watch on Valentine's Day. Uh, Pride and Glory. Really good film too. Uh, Medea's Happy Family. I didn't really like this. Didn't really like it. It wasn't that funny to me. And then Freedom Riders. One of my favorite movies came out in 2007, starring Hilary Swank and Patrick Dempsey. Mm, he was sexy too, dude. Like, I don't know what's up with me and old men, but it's something serious. But this is an awesome movie right here. One of my favorite, top ten favorite movies. It's up there with uh, The Notebook, Titanic, and A Walk to Remember. And then we have Spring Breakers. Spring Break. Spring Break. That's all you heard. And it got so freaking annoying that after the movie I kept saying Spring Break. Even though it was nowhere clear. Well, I guess. It was in March when it came out. So I guess it was kind of close to Spring Break. 
Um, but we got Spring Breakers starring, uh, what's her name? Vanessa Hudgens, Selena Gomez, and, uh, I forgot her name. I know her name. Ashley Benson. That's what it is. I don't know this girl here, though. I don't know you. And then James Franco. And then we have X-Men's The Last Stand. Uh, Bruce Willis, Leave Free or Die Hard. Premium Rush. I'm trying to pick it up because I'm talking too damn much. And then we have Crank. The Avengers. Steve Austin's Damage. Another good Steve Austin movie. I don't know where the disc is for this. But uh, Limited Sneak is a series of unfortunate events. Alright. Last and final stack. We have White Chicks. One of my favorite movies. Bad Teacher. Awesome movie. Fomo Dick and Jane. Funny movie. Love Jim Carrey. Uh, Gold Member. Steve Austin. Austin Powers. Steve. Uh, you got it. 50-50. I wish I did a review on that a while back. Blood and Chocolate. Really good movie. I love supernatural stuff. Um, the Social Network. Have yet to see it. 17 again. Really great movie. I love Zac Efron. Just My Luck. Back when Lindsay Lohan was awesome. Where she started getting addicted to drugs and she turned gay and all that weird stuff. Um, Undiscovered. Really good movie. I used to love Ashley Simpson. Her CD was freaking awesome, dude. Um, and then we have Catch and Release. A romance movie. I love romantic movies. Uh, John Tucker Must Die. Jesse Metcalf is hot as hell. Uh, then we have A Secret Life of Bees. And this movie was awesome. I can't remember his name right now. Tristan Wilde is hot. I don't think you can, You can't see him on the front, but he's on the back. I think. No, he's not. They don't even have him on the back. Um, and then we have Things We Lost in the Fire starring Halle Berry. Awesome freaking movie. And Mr. Woodcock. So that does it for my DVD collection. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know I talked a lot. Um, I apologize about that. It's just so much nostalgia. Especially when it came to my video now player. I'm so pissed I gotta find that. I gotta ask my mom where it is. I really do. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to tell my hawk that like button. And if you've seen any movie that I've mentioned and you would like me to do a review on, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to do it. And uh, hopefully you guys have a good day. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a good day, everyone.